This is CARE 11 News Saturday. Well, good morning and welcome to CARE 11 News Saturday. I'm Belinda Jensen. Good morning, I'm Eric Perkins. It is Saturday, June 16th. It is. Uh, if I'm doing the math correctly, which I know I am. This Edge Music Festival on Harriet Island. And still ahead, we're going to move from the backyard to the kitchen because the rain showers have moved in. And we're looking at some really important safety tips if you're thinking about grilling once the rain moves on by. We'll be back in just a few moments. which is located under the news tab. You'll be able to find it. Up next, uh, well, Carol of New Saturday after the break, uh, food. They've moved from the yard because it's pouring out there. The folks at Kowalski's are inside now, and we're looking forward to that. Bell has that coming up. Well, the grill is a little wet, even though we were out there earlier just grilling up a storm. So we've moved inside because that's what Minnesotans do. They move inside, they move outside, they adapt with the weather. Nimble, we're but very nimble. Nimble, but they're going to grill regardless. They're yes. going to find the time. And Sue Moores is here, and she's a registered dietitian with Kowalski's, and she always comes with a f just tons of information. In fact, the last segment when you were on, there was so much <laughs> that we so wanted to, to pull the grilling out and really just make a segment out of it because it not only is fun to see all the varieties that you can grill, but it, there is there are a number of safety issues with grilling. Well, there is just from a, um, what can form on your food if you're not careful. So there is a little finesse when you grill mostly, really essentially the meat piece of it. So when you grill, grill those protein foods, fish, chicken, bratwurst, meat, there are substances that can form on the food because it interacts the grill grilling process, smoke, high heat and length of time on the grill, interact with the proteins in those foods to form some not so great stuff. But there's lots of easy ways to navigate through that so it doesn't form on your food and you have really great stuff coming off the grill. Fabulous. We're going to start right over here where you've grilled off some, and so it's <laughs> all about the timing, right? It is about the timing and sort of how you put stuff on the grill. So you can see here we've over grilled. I'm very good at that. Yes, so am I. <laughs> I love Over grill, are, actually. Uh, the bratwurst and the chicken. And the length of time that a food is on the grill gives it more time for these things to form. They're cancer-causing agents, and so not good. But, and some people are more prone to it maybe than others. But again, easy ways to navigate it. And one of the ways is to put a barrier, if you will, between what's happening on the grill and your food. And if you marinate food, you actually can cut that uh, risk of those things forming by 90%. Or not Just so, simply putting so a barrier. So here we are, we, we marinated this. Yep. And a barrier, what is this? Is this what you're talking about? Well, this still would allow smoke to come through. So a barrier is simply this marinade on there. Okay, so that's what you're talking about. So it coats the okay. meat or skin on the chicken. We always say, take the skin off. But if you leave it on when you grill and then take it off, it's protected the food, if you will, from that smoke or flames that would come up because fat or juices will drip down and the flames come up. And okay. again, that high heat, amount of time on the grill, smoke, envelop it, the agents or those substances fall, uh, form, and then it's a problem. Okay, but this is pretty cool. So tell us it what is this cool. is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very. It, sometimes you get those bigger baskets, and we've got one, I think, right down here. If yeah. You have trouble fitting it all on the grill. This is a really simple flat silicone type of f where you could put your meat on there, your fish on there. I like spray that. Spray it with cooking spray. Put a little oil on it just so that the foods don't stick. Lay it flat on the grill. I love that we brought in the Little Weber yes, since the other Weber. one out there is soaking wet. And you know what? I think folks are really starting to uh, grill vegetables more and more, even, of course, romaine. I had I was in an event in the Arboretum Wednesday, and that mm. was the salad, grilled romaine. It was so good. It's Absolutely really good. interesting to do. Uh, with the vegetables and such, you still want to have sort of, again, that kind of barrier to it. So you can use little trays like this that mm -hmm. keep it all the way off, or you can... Um, just watch that time and heat. So if you move the grill rack up, and so it's not so close to the flames, that's a good way to keep it away. These vegetables, anywhere from two to 10 minutes is about how long vegetables will stay on the grill. Two to 10 minutes, and it doesn't take more than that. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So with corn on the cob, do you like to grill it with the husks, just take the hair off and soak them? Or what is your preferred method? Well, I asked around because there are multiple ways to do that. And uh, most folks here at Kowalski's will put, leave the husks on, take the silk off. So pull it back, take the silk off, leave the husks on, soak them for 30 minutes or so. In like salty water or, or just, just water. water just water and well, then she says water I say a little bit of salt okay water. got it well, I do the salt at the end <laughs> that's my finishing touch no problem and then sort of tighten that husk back up again okay and put it on the grill yep and that is a protectant too if you yes. think of it that way because you're not going to eat the husks right and what about romaine how long does that take you know that's sort of tricky it's about two minutes 
That's it. Yeah, and you need to watch those vegetables close because some of them, like a lettuce, is pretty fragile. It goes pretty quick. Uh, some of the other ones, like carrots or potatoes, those can last quite a bit of time. Fabulous. And fruit. Fruit is a great uh, last course or any course, and grilling it off is such a good idea as well. And a lot of folks don't think about fruit, and that's people are on sort of that vegetable camp already, but fruit, a heartier fruits or more substantial fruits like pineapple, apple, pear, nectarines, we're in great peach season, just be able to twist it. Again, key is to put a little bit of oil on it and then put it on the grill. Look at how great this looks. So it is really easy, but when you do it, you almost want to get a peach that's a little bit more firmed up, right? Great and, point. And then just a little bit of olive oil is what you... Olive or canola oil, even you could do a little bit of melted butter and it just protects it on that grill. Get You get those grill marks, but it doesn't stick. And that's the key because as they are on the grill, they soften up, so leave the skin on. Yeah, absolutely. A little less ripe. And then just a tiny on. little bit of, like, really good ice cream. Just a little scoop and you're good. I'm thinking ice cream, too. I'm thinking ice cream as well. <laughs> All right, well, last but not least, we have yeah. a little recipe to share everyone with everyone. And this is really fun. We like s'mores in our house, but um, not a couple of years ago, somebody turned me on to this one, and you grill bananas. So you put a little bit of a slit, and again, pick not the uber-ripe banana, but one that will hold its shape a little okay. bit. A little bit of a slit about halfway through. All yep. right, let's show them that because I want to make sure they see that. I'll put it right underneath this camera. So just this much. Yep, just because as it cooks, it's going to be harder to slit it later. Okay. So just a little bit of a slit, All and right. then you lay it on the grill for about five minutes each side. And it gets this black, but gets that's okay. It gets that black, and people go, ooh, that doesn't look so good. But then um, you open it up after you take it off and scoop out the middle, which okay. will be sort of custard-like. I cannot it, believe that Eric Perkins is not here yet with this. This is looking so fabulous. And of course, you, you of course, did, did not spare any expense and use Ghirardelli, well, which I really appreciate this If you're going to go, you've got to go big. you got to go because you're not going to have too much. You're just going to have a little bit. Yeah. And so these are great. You put that Look hot on there. It melts the chocolate just perfect. So you don't even need no the fire in the backyard and your hair doesn't have to smell like fire for three days. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. It's such a good idea. It's a good point. <laughs> all right, Sue, we so appreciate it. Thank and you. such great information. We put all of Sue's food safety tips on our website mm -hmm. at care11.com on our Saturday show page. And also this recipe. Yes. Oh, it's so simple. You barely need one but Easy maybe it. yeah absolutely it's on the recipe tab and all of it of course is on care11.com where is eric i'm just going to eat all these we'll be back in a few minutes i've got one for me seasonal concepts is happening